Hello backpackers, this is Juan from Juan Backpacks. Today I'm here to do a deep dive of my sleep system. It's the sleep system I'm going to be using on the High Sierra Trail in just about six more weeks from right now. It's a really nice sleep system that I've used on the John Muir Trail as well when I did that last year. I've also, also used this sleep system probably for the last two plus years. I'm very comfortable with it and with minor adjustments I can take this actually into the winter as well here in Pennsylvania. So let me go ahead and start with the first piece of gear. I'm going to start with the sleeping pad <clears throat> since that's kind of at the bottom baseline of the whole system. I actually used the Thermarest Neo Air, Neo Air X Lite <clears throat> women's version. I think that's an important distinction. I don't take the uh, pump sack with me unless it's winter. I don't feel a need for it. I like it in the winter because I'm not breathing hot air into the sleep pad. And then later on, once the air cools, it starts to deflate a little bit. And then you got to keep blowing air into it. So I use this in the winter. But other than that, I just ditch it under normal circumstances. The dimensions of the uh, women's uh, Neo Air X Lite are, I think, it's 66 by 20 by two and a half inches thick. The length is great for me because I'm shorter. I'm about five foot five or so. And so I fit on this pad really nicely. My whole body plus my feet fit on it. Um, so I'm also carrying a little bit less weight because of it versus the R value. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the thickness of the pad <clears throat> is really nice for me. I'm a side sleeper. I roll around a lot at night. And so I've never really had a problem with the two and a half inch pad hitting bottom or feeling uncomfortable. So I know that some folks go up to three inches and I'm a pretty heavy dude and I'm not sure, I mean, it just works for me. The two and a half inches works and it's worked for me, you know, numerous nights. The width of the pad is 20 inches. I like it. Um, I don't have a problem sleeping on a 20 inch wide pad, even though I roll a lot because I tend to roll in place. I don't really roll from side to side, flop onto my belly and so forth. And so the 20 inch width works for me just fine. <clears throat> The thing that I really like about this is that at the 66 inch length, the short length, I'm getting a sleep pad that weighs a total of 12 ounces. That's pretty light. And, and on top of that at 12 ounces, this women's version of the Neo, Neo Air X Lite is, uh, or has a 5.6 R value. That's pretty high. And, and really, it, it, that's why I use it into the winter as well. I can do something a little bit extra with it and get me uh, over six, actually, for the winter time. So I really like the Neo Air x Lite women's version. And I would recommend if you're shorter and you can jump into one of these and you, don't, you, know, and, and you can fit on one of these, they're really nice because of the R value. You don't have to do much change up in the shoulder seasons and stuff like that. So I really like the Nero Air Women's x Lite. I've had zero problems with it, zero punctures, zero leakage. Um, it just, and I, I don't really take care of stuff. I just use it right out on the trail. I just use it. I haven't taken any extra care with it and it's doing just fine. Some people complain of the noise. I don't know. I've heard noise here. <laughs> Um, I know that you can get lighter um, with your sleep pad and it does get noisier as you get lighter because of some of the things that the companies have to do to make them quiet. But overall for the weight, I mean, 12 ounces in 5.6 R value, um, you just can't beat it. So I, I really, really see no reason to change up my sleep pad and I'm just kind of sticking with it over time. Uh, so that's my sleep pad. The next thing that I always take with me is a pillow. And this is really just a pillow I got from Outdoor Vitals. It was fairly inexpensive. I think I actually got this one during a special for like $5 shipping I got this. Um, it's worked for me. It's thick enough. I'm not sure what the dimensions are. It's probably at least two and a half inches, maybe three inches thick. Um, it's kind of a smallish on size, but it works. It's really um, like springy. It's really like, like cushy. And I, it's got like this uh, really rubbery um, kind of uh, outside to it. It's not really brittle, like really, uh, I guess, brittle and it stretches a lot. Uh, and so I really like that about it because it's really comfortable. Uh, I put a couple pieces of uh, loop Velcro, um, the, the hook, I'm sorry, the hook part of the Velcro on near the head of my sleeping pad, just a couple. And really that's enough friction to keep this in place. And it kind of sticks on it without getting too sticky. So I like that a lot. So that is my pillow. And this pillow weighs, 
um, 2.5 ounces, if memory serves me correctly. I'll put a link to my High Sierra Trail uh, base weight uh, lighter pack, and you'll be able to see the exact weight, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, two and a half ounces. I do not take the stuff sack, just the pillow thrown in, in, in my gear. So the next thing that I use in my sleep system, obviously, is, is either a sleeping bag or a quilt. I'm big on quilts. And so I have a hammock gear, and I'm not going to pull it completely out. I've got a hammock gear um, <clears throat> economy burrow uh, quilt. Uh, it's got a sewn foot box. It's, uh, and I don't see the need for a zippered foot box, plus it makes it a little bit lighter. Um, I think this sleeping bag comes in at about, I want to say, 20, 22 to 25 ounces. Again, it's in my lighter pack. It's a 20-degree quilt. I do have the pad straps for it. Again, I've not had the need, even in my winter backpacking that I've done this past year, uh, down to 20 degrees, I've never felt the need to put the pad straps on to keep it connected to the sleeping pad and keep the gapping down. It seems to work. Now, when I bought my Economy Burrow, I did get the wider version for ground sleeping, so I think that's important. Uh, I think that's a 54 inches, something like that. Uh, and I didn't get over stuff and it seems to work okay down to 20 degrees um, when I used it this past winter. But it's a great um, kind of really, you know, as far as quilts go, fairly, I won't say inexpensive, but it's on the cheaper side of things. But the quality is fantastic. I mean, I've used this again when I, in 20, or 2020 when I did, um, you know, a number of days out on the Smokies, I used this quilt. I used the quilt on my uh, 20, I was out for 24 days total of backpacking and, and sleeping my tent and sleeping with this, 24 days total, um, and it performed great, even above tree line. We slept at like 12,500 feet one night, and it was pretty darn cold. It sleeted a little bit, kind of a little bit of snowy, and, uh, and I felt really good. And like I said, I've used it winter backpacking as well. I like the quilt, works really well. And, uh, and I'm sticking with it. Again, it's, I think it's 22 to 25 ounces. You can check my lighter pack link for that. Uh, so got a sleeping pad, got a pillow, got a quilt. The other thing that I'd consider part of my sleep system is actually my sleep clothes. Now, I use uh, Merino wool sleep clothes, and these are a brand called Cocatat. It's actually a kayaking company brand, um, or not a kayak, a kayaking clothing company brand they make dry suits and so forth and I'm a whitewater paddler and so I had this around already and it's really extremely high quality it's long sleeve shirt and then obviously the pants here as well um, the combined total there I think is about 10 ounces total between both of these um, so it's a bit of a hit in weight but it doubles as my sleep clothes um, especially when I know that we're going to be getting, you know, above tree line and so forth, like the High Sierra Trail. I want to make sure I do have some sleep clothes with me in case I need them. The other thing that I do with my sleep clothes, they are my base layer if it does get cold. So when I'm hiking in the Sierra, uh, if it, we do hit a cold snap, cold front for whatever reason, and I need something in the morning because I hike in shorts a lot, um, that's pretty much all I hike in, backpack in in summer. And so we'll be going in July. And so... I'll have this to use as a base layer if I, in fact, need it. But otherwise, it'll be my nice, clean sleep clothes for the end of the night. So I do consider that part of the sleep system. The other thing I consider part of my sleep system are some <clears throat> uh, merino wool um, um, socks. Um, I really like um, different wool socks. Um, they, you know, and I like sleep socks because they'll keep my feet warm. And it's also just nice to have like some comfy sleep socks to put on that aren't socks that you're hiking in or swapping out. Because even when you're rinsing out, you're, I take two pairs of hiking socks and I rinse them and swap them every day. And that's nice. I mean, it's great. But, you know, it's not the same thing as having just like a dedicated sleep sock. Plus, my sleep socks tend to be thicker than my hiking socks. I like really thin hiking socks that wick away moisture a lot, you know, quicker. And I like um, these types of socks, you know, the thicker socks to, to sleep in. Again, it's a bit of a weight hit. Um, I can't remember. Again, it's in my, my lighter pack link, but uh, a bit of a weight hit on the, the socks. But, you know, again, at comfort and so forth and sleeping, there's nothing 
better than getting a good night's sleep where you're comfortable uh, when you're backpacking. And I always, always have a good night's sleep with my sleep system. Uh, and so I'm going to use sleep socks. So that is my sleep system for the High Sierra Trail. And generally, honestly, the sleep system that I use most of the time when I'm backpacking. I do have some gear that I supplement. I'll probably do a video on that. If you'd like to see a video on how I take this into the shoulder season and into the winter uh, by just adding a few pieces of gear, go ahead and post down below and I'll make another video. So until next time, backpackers, get out there and do some backpacking. Get off of YouTube and stop watching YouTube videos, unless you're watching mine. So until my next video, I'll see you guys 